Today's episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With the beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone from adults to teens and even children can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Again, that's csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm sick. But I'm I'm sick. I'm Mark. (laughs) (laughs) And on today's episode, it's part two, questions from our wives, the Janelle Fuller edition. I'm nervous, bro. Here's the the scary envelope with the question inside. We don't know what it is. It's completely sealed, but uh, Mark, you ready to find out? Let's go. Let's go. Well, that didn't take long to well, flub. I unmuted too quick. You, you, you're a little fast on the draw tonight, sir. Because people don't realize we chat during the intros. We're talking all of a sudden. It's like, oh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. He's like, oh, yeah. Down. And then we got that. Oh, oh, crap. Oh, <laughs> no, but, but we're both not feeling great tonight, my dude. We're going to power through we three are. episodes. We're going to deal with our, I got my morning voice on right so now. So the next three episodes are going to sound a little off. But <laughs> you know water. what? water. We're gonna, I, got, I got cough drops. I've got, I've got the ginger ale. I've got the... Aha! Uh-huh, I'm coffee curious about this aha uh-huh, though. This new peach one that you Janiel got. Janiel got it the other day, and it was like I wasn't too keen on trying it, but when I tasted, it, I was like, you know what, this is pretty good. Okay, so I went to Shed Aquarium with the family the other week. Yep. Which side note, we got a our, our family is so stinking huge. It's cheaper for us just to get family That's passes crazy. places than just actually go. Right. So now we have a family pass. So and we get two adults to come with us free. So you can dish the kids and come with us. But check this out. They had a Fuji apple and white tea huh. caffeinated aha. Interesting. It How wasn't that? it was not that good. Oh, okay. It, it was like I'm I'm a big, big, big apple fan. I'm not the biggest fan of Fuji apples in general. Sure. But it almost had like a uh like if you take apple juice and water it down to the point where it doesn't even taste like apple juice like, anymore. Like the lemon, La- Lacroix. Yeah, like literally, it's like you apple, like take apple juice, water it down yeah. as much as you possibly humanly can, the, and then add a little fizzy up in where there. Where it's disgusting. Yes, that's so exactly what it was like, like. It's just like that bad lemon, Lacroix. Oh, but or no, but that, it wasn't lemon. What was that? It was called something. It was specific. it was lemon something, and it tasted like soaked. Like somebody took water and soaked the lemon cake in it, and then strained out the lemon cake, and then put it in and fizzed it up. That's what it tasted like. It was horrible. And that is the most accurate description I ever heard. Because I, yeah. I took a sip and I'm like, I don't like this. And then you said what no, you Jan- thought it tasted Janiel like. Janiel said it. That was Janiel. That, that was Janiel's thought. And I was like, yeah, so you are 100% correct. We're just going to highlight Janiel this whole episode. It's just a whole episode. Dude, we are going to try to get you as many brownie points as humanly possible tonight. That's not going to work. <laughs> Janiel, does, Janiel doesn't work on a brownie point system. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I need to work on my brownie point system, though, because Beth has been gone the last, like, four, three days? Three, this three is days. day three that she's been yeah, gone. She's right. been down and visited her sister down in Kentucky. So it's just been me at home working, grinding, making new mini series or mini courses for churches. Now's the time to do it, right? Man, it's yeah, but I'm I'm tired, man. Like I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 well, funny how I'm tired without kids, but it's because I don't go to bed well without Beth. Well, and then you, you know? don't feel good on top of it. So yeah, I I woke <laughs> up the other day with just not being able to talk, and right. so like yesterday was really bad into the uh, point where I didn't even re- do like some video recordings for clients that I was supposed to do. And I'm like, Nope. And then today I was going to do uh, recordings for the other podcast and I right. went to grab my mic and I went, Nope, I got to save every, every ounce of talking abilities for the podcast. Right so, yeah. here we cool. are. I mean, I'll try gonna, to, I, I still got try. my energy, my energy levels get, there, but my voice and, just doesn't match it. And I'm the opposite. I still got my voice, but my energy levels aren't there right now. It's true, but it's also hot in this room right now. It, I'm is sweating. It? Is it? I'm sweating. Wow, it's like so, 68 in here? I don't know, man. 69? I might take off my shoes and get comfy. But either way, I just wanted to bring up that that little Fuji Apple white tea AHA caffeinated. Because I meant to send you a picture of it. That's disgusting. And then one of the kids had an absolute meltdown <laughs> in the middle of, like, shed. That never happens. And then I was like, oh, I have to deal with that. At, so. at the Fuller house, that never happens. Never. We, we, Your kids our are kids, angels. Yeah, they never have meltdowns whatsoever. <laughs> 
<laughs> people okay. can, people hey. that are watching on YouTube can see me rolling my eyes. So here's a fun question. What is the biggest, um, I don't want to say like preconceived idea, but what's been the most like ceiling shattering thing about being a parent that you've learned since being a parent? Mm. You know, what, that, does that all, question make sense? That all the parents that like to try to give their advice about, oh, well, you should try this. This is this works. This is how you should discipline your child. For some children, it doesn't work. I, I mean, so, so before you're a parent, you thought there was like I'm thought I thought okay, there's a formula to where you can figure out how to like discipline and get through to a child to where they learn. No, no, some kids just don't get it. They're just that stubborn. So it, it totally blew out the preconception. I think that I would be mine too. That that 100% would, would be me too. Because like, it, and even with the kids that we have at home, they all respond to right. things differently. Sure. You know, like I can be extremely hard-nosed on some kids and that's what they need. But then right. other ones, if I, you know, put my thumb down just even by a smidgen, they'll start to cry. If I look at Piper a certain way, oh, she, well, start, she's such she, a she just starts bawling but her eyes out. She is a sweetheart. And Noel, I could scream and scream and scream and scream. <laughs> I could spank until she was there was nothing left, right? I, which, I, I could which do all you, which, which, which I don't. You have, which you have not. We have to sure we don't get you in but, trouble. But I'm saying, like, I could do <laughs> all the things give a crap. that everybody, we've tried. Everything that people have suggested, right, for four years now, we have tried. And we are... Noel, one billion parents, zero. Like she does not and we've, care. And it's not like we haven't like stayed strict upon, you know, consistency and, and, and the discipline. Oh, no, you guys are kids. consistent. And it, she just doesn't care. She's you know, like, I'm going to show you. And with, she's just that stubborn. With Nora. Beth, but I love her. Before I even knew Beth and Nora. Well, I mean, it's that Beth and I were starting to date. Um, she had an in-home therapist. And the therapist said, you know, Nora's a bit of a unique one where – um, consequences don't made her, motivate her, but neither do rewards. Right. And that's, and, and that's, that's Noel. Noel too. That's okay. Noel. It's like, Hey, finish your Mac and cheese and I'll give you this big old bowl of ice cream. And she's like, no, I'm like, well, finish your Mac and cheese. Or you're going to bed. No. I'm like, well then don't eat. I want my food, but oh, you're not eating. Man. Like it's just like Dude, all over the place. When, uh, it was when Janiel, you took her plate away or did Janiel? Cause she was Janiel, just sitting there. Janiel took her bowl away. You guys away. had dinner way before I showed up. And uh, she was just chilling. We there. sat down at five o'clock and We're, you showed up at six, six Oh five, six Oh five. And you probably came in and when you saw all that transpire about six twenty. Yeah. So she's been, she was chilling there an hour and a half almost. And then Janiel said, all right, I'm just taking your bowl yeah, away. She, it, it's and, time but, to get Jamie's it was on. Low key, it was our time to get your Jamie's on. Let's put your bowl. And oh my goodness! Oh, she lost it. She unleashed lost the it. beast on you. Oh fools. my goodness! And I was just say, I will say this though. See, here, here's the deal. When whenever I saw, um, for lack of a better word, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the word that you're looking for, like opinion. <laughs> no, but like a strong-willed child, sure. right? Whenever I saw someone with else with a strong willed child, and the dude, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'll never have a kill. I'm going to break well, that fool. I was going to say, I always no. thought, oh, the parents just aren't staying consistent with the discipline. No, that's sometimes the, the kids don't give a crap. And they don't. And I apologize for ever having those thoughts because that's just my my child. Yep. And I love her the snot out of her. She is a daddy's girl, right? We we have a, a tight bond that. You're the Noel whisperer. We, we, yeah, we just have a good bond. And she still acts that way. So, yeah. That's just wild. All right. That's anyways, let's wild, jump man. into the, the the would you rather's here real fast since we're already at eight and a half minutes. You know, I thought of something. Yeah, well, actually, I, I won't. I won't start a new conversation. Don't, wait, save I won't it, start a new save conversation. It, save it. <laughs> save it for the podcast. <laughs> All right. So, would you rather have a, a secret stash of a hundred thousand dollars, or have a million dollars that all your friends and family know about? They can know. Oh, they I'll, can I'll, know. I'll choose a million because I can help more people. Well, not even just that. But I'm good with that. But I still have the ability to say, like, no. Oh, like, sure. But, like, hey, you know, I see my so-and-so friend needs a car. All right, well, it does, I'm not going to buy on the brand-new car, but I'll buy you a, a reliable car. Yeah, I, I think that's more people if they, if they deal with, like, you know, and I'll use that word, like, toxic family members or whatnot. Oh, there's you that know, word there's again. that word. Oh, uh, go back so. and listen to the toxic, what is it, toxic relationships? Toxic relationships. That was like, yeah. what, 10 episodes ago or something? Uh, I, don't I don't remember. But but I would say a million bucks, 100%, give All me right. that million dollars. So 64% agree with us, a million dollars, 36 said, a $100,000 secret stash. Why you got to keep a secret? I love it, because they can secrets. buy me a bone. Secrets They can never buy me a anybody. truck All right. pull in. Would you rather be a thief or be a beggar? Well, oh. I I don't have, I, I have too much of a conscience to steal, so I don't think I could be an Aladdin or a... Uh, or Robin Hood, so I, mm. I'd be a beggar. Yeah, I'd probably end up a beggar. Too. I'd, I'd probably end up a beggar. 
46 uh, percent oh. said beggar. 54 percent said I'll be a thief. Some of y'all ain't got no morals. No, some morals. of y'all ain't got no morals. All right, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Uh, be able to talk to animals. Be able to speak all foreign languages. Give me the language. Give me the language. But now, now I will say the animals would be pretty dope. It would like, be awesome, professor. It, it would, would be, be awesome. Pretty dope. But I'm not trying to win souls of the animals to Jesus. <laughs> no, but, but okay. But let's think but how about cool it, would it. Be to be how cool like, would it be to know what is going on in her animal? Like, because we have some people that are big time animal lovers sure. in our podcast world. Like, I know so many people have dogs and. Remember that one time he did like, hey, show a picture of your animal in the yes, Facebook group, yes. and that thing exploded. Yes, it did. So it'd be really cool to look at a cat and actually be like, okay, so what are you actually thinking? Do you just have like, you know, that face, or are you actually like a little Satan in a cat form? Hmm. Like, but I would say people. All right. I would say people. So fifty five percent said talk to animals. What? Forty five percent said speak a foreign language. Oh wait, wait. So more people would rather speak to animals than speak with people who they. They'd be wow. like, they'd rather be like meow 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 meow. Right meow, 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 right. I can't go high. This is this is my range tonight. This is it. All right. I got my morning well, wake-up voice. Let's do oh, another one? Let's do one more. All right. All right. Would you? All right. All well, right, all we're right. not going to do that one because you, you are already done that. Oh. <laughs> I am so, a startup. So uh, would you rather have happy moments become happier or sad Ooh. moments become less sad? Uh, happy moments become more happy. 100%. Yeah. I think the sadness, even though... It hurts. It helps form who you are. Well, it's true. I mean, but think about this way. I think it was a Bob Ross, which I mean, obviously Happy I love trees. Bob Ross. But he, I Happy. think it was him or someone else who said that you can't see the uh, the actual painting without the shadows. Right. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You can't see the the mountaintops without the I valleys. Like that. So fifty nine percent said become happier moments. Now the sad 41%. moments still suck. They do, but uh, again, they're not all. I mean, they suck and they they bad at the time or bad for a while. Like you know. I think of um, Stephen Curtis Chapman when his, I think she was nine or ten year old daughter died. I mean, that's got to be hard. How long ago was that? That was a long. So I feel like that was a long if time ago. Was down, if Janine was down here, she'd be like, "Oh, it was this date in this month at this time," because she's like a huge Stephen Curtis Chapman fan. <laughs> Dude, we got so much. Okay, so before Already? we started recording, one more. One, one, we went one of those. live. We, we hit record. I basically put this in the same time and say, "We're recording tonight. What fun question should we answer at the top of the episode? We'll do an easy one, okay?" Best waffle slash pancake topping. We'll do that one. What's your favorite thing to put on some waffles or some pancakes? And the answer is, it cannot be chicken, even though chicken and waffles is really yummy. It is, but, but I'm but like I'm, I'm thinking like a standard. I'm basic. You want you want maple syrup? Maple syrup. Now, are you picky on your maple syrup? I am I'm picky. I am very picky with my maple. It has to be good maple syrup. Like I'll eat I'll eat the Aunt Jemima and I'll eat the Aldi stuff or the Walmart whatever, but <laughs> I want right. the real stuff. So from Vermont. I, I got you got it. Okay. You got to be careful though, because some of the real stuff is just too sweet, right? It's too thin. Oh too no, sweet, I have a specific like, one at Meyer uh, that I like. That's not super expensive, but it's it's still real. You I know? like the original uh, Aunt Jemima's. That stuff is yummy. That, that's that's kind of my go-to. Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima. But, but if you ha- if you had to do something different, you'd do. She's my auntie. See, I am all about the. I want some bacon on it. I also want the syrup. And what our family does now, this is the best thing. This is not a me. I just do syrup and uh, and butter too. So sure, sure, I, yeah, I do well, that. right, and right. Add bacon and add some bacon to it. You know, whatever. I actually like sprinkling chocolate chips. I don't like putting chocolate chips in my pancakes oh, or in see, my. Waffles. I love it because it gets that little crisp on the outside. See, I don't like that. Oh, I want so them good. actually physically dropped on it. But what Beth does for all the kids yeah, is she whips off. out all the sprinkles. She'll whip cream every single one and let them choose their sprinkles. Nice. So whenever they have pancakes or waffles, they, whenever, my kids, my kids have pancakes or waffles, we whip cream them mugs and they, Beth whips out the sprinkles and they have a heyday. So diabetes on a plate. All right. Basically. <laughs> basically, but I, I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty basic with that too. So, I don't like fruit. I don't like fruit on my waffles or my pancakes. Um, I do Just sometimes syrup. strawberries. Syrup I, like, I like strawberries. Um, I, I mean, I like a wide variety of things on it. Uh. But I'm, if I mean, if we're going basic, what's our go to? My my go to is just like syrup. It used to be uh, powdered sugar. That's pretty po- yummy. Po- well, you got to have the butter. You got to put yes. the butter on that it melts Melt that it. Yep. And then you mm-hmm. put the powdered sugar on it and it makes like an icing on it. Uh-huh. But it's so unhealthy for you. <laughs> or, or I was trying to think or, what else I could put on there. Or, or, or like cinnamon sugar. Have you ever done that? I do that on oh. toast all the time, but I've never done that on a pancake oh, or a waffle. Really? So butter oh. like a waffle or pan? I mean, it's, yeah, it's bu- bread, butter, so it makes and then, sense. And then like not just cinnamon, but like you take the cinnamon and mix it with sugar and make a cinnamon sugar mix. I mean, that makes sense because Beth does and monkey bread, bring- and that oh. mo- monkey bread is glorious. Oh. You know what else Beth makes that's glorious? 
Meatloaf. I knew it was coming. All right, let's move on. At that note, see? You, every time you mention it, we're just going to move on. You don't get to talk no more. I love it. Actually, Either way, Johnny Watt. Here we go. You're just, you're just muted now, so you don't get to talk anymore. <laughs> but Johnny Watt asked that question. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll answer some of the other ones at, on the next couple sure. episodes. So coffee. What coffee are we drinking this evening? Dude, I want you to talk about because this was sent to us from... Jim Ole. I, I, I thought it Jim was... Ol. I was going to say, it starts with a J. Jim Ole sent us some... Kona Coffee from, from Hawaii. Hawaii. Which he low-key dropped that his kids live there. So what I'm hearing is the fact of when we go down to Hawaii, we have a place to stay. <laughs> well, it's his kids. I don't know if it's I don't. I, we, we drop it in on that, man. So uh, this, it's is a, like second, this is the, uh, the letter of Second John, hospitality. <laughs> sure. It's a Kona Peabody. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which, which explain what a Peabody is. I had no idea what that was. So a Peabody is supposed to be a little bit more dense, so it brings out like a sweeter profile. It's supposed to, right, if it's roasted, right? And I think it does. Like um, this coffee. So I roasted this yesterday, last night. Yeah, my bag's over there. I so it's it. been literally 24 hours since the roast time on this. And... Uh, yeah, it's really good. And it's it's got still, a lot of, it still has that just roasted. Yeah, it's it's as fresh as I, fresh I don't want to say be. oily because it's not like oils that they were put on it, but just the natural cooking process of the bean. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just it, you open up the bag and you can smell because, I mean, I gave you the bag that has the mm. degassing valve. I just put mine in a jar and left the jar on loose. <laughs> <laughs> But you got the nice one. So. I got the nice bag. But no, um, this stuff is so good. Now, yeah, I'm doing a different good. creamer than I normally do. So, so I'm this doing is, Starbucks caramel creamer. Yeah, this is mine. the caramel macchiato creamer, which I put way less in than I normally do because I wanted to taste the flavor. And typically, when I drink a coffee, I would drink it just straight. Yep. Like the first cup would be just straight if I'm trying a new coffee. But this one, I was like, yeah, I'll put a little creamer. But I will say my this tum -tum's is... My tum-tum's a little upset, so I'll put a little Mexican creamer. Mexican high-grown is still my favorite. I, I, I have to... I love me some Mexican high-grown. This stuff's I'm amazing. I'm still going to go with the Jamaican Blue Mountain, man. I've been drinking some... Uh, the Ethiopian... It's, it's an Ethiopian light roast, though. I've never right. had an Ethiopian light roast, because it's the naturally Yergolf, the, a darker roast. I think you've been drinking the Ethiopian Yergoff, is I think what it said on the bag when I, when you posted it on the... Oh, I don't know. It's from, it's from uh, Water Street Coffee up yeah. in Kalamazoo. Right. But that stuff's amazing. But anyways, thank you, Jim. But this, Ole Jim, this, the coffee. this stuff it is, is good, man. Delicious. Um, I'm, my cup's almost gone. I'm trying to drink. Fill food. my cup, Janil. I lift it up, Janil. See what I think? I think fill me up, oh. Buttercup, baby. Let me down. Yeah. No. <laughs> you don't know that one. Oh, I know it. You just don't do it justice. <laughs> I can't do any song justice. God said, make a joyful noise. <laughs> A, a good one's not required because I can't make a good one. <laughs> All right, let's j dive into this review. Yeah you, yeah, you read the review. I'm going to pop a cough drop because I right, pop it. Hurting. We're just a pair over here. So this this review comes from Barry James, 2003, on May 5th, 2022. And it's a butt long one, so have fun reading it. I know. That's why you wanted me to read it because it's a long <laughs> one. Basically. The next two episodes, though, it's shorter ones. So. Uh, my favorite those. podcast ever, five stars. I have been a faithful listener since I've tried learning how to start my own podcast. I started listening in September 2021. I was looking for inspiration on how my podcast should be laid out. At first, I was listening for an inspiration uh, on that. I quickly turned into a huge fan, and I have loved being a part of the RTC fam. Hands up, hands up. That's what it, it's. Boop, boop. It's That's literally what, no. It's there. a whoop whoop. Is that what it is? Whoop, whoop. I don't know. I don't. I don't speak text. Or it's a. I, I read text. I don't speak it. But continue. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite episode is either finding God's will for your life or the episode about Calvinism and Armenianism. I uh, can't remember the title of that. Laugh out loud. Uh, or LOL. Uh, Mark and Fuller are both very wise and very gifted in making things easy to understand. Bro, we, that's just because we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> they can uh, make it, homie. <laughs> the discussions challenge me and my views of biblical concepts. They challenge me to dive into my word and really get in depth when I study my theology and to always, capital letters, be ready to give an answer for my faith. Listening to RTC, RTC is one of the best parts of my weeks slash days. I have left reviews on Facebook before. However, I didn't realize they didn't read those until <laughs> oh, months snap. after. Sorry, ha homie. ha. So I'm really excited to hear my review in a future episode. I love this podcast. P.S. Mark and Fuller, if you ever want to do a collaboration with my podcast, it's called The Godcast. My dream would come true if this happened. LOL. Let's go. P.P.S. Dude, we have uh, 14 wait, reviews. There's a P.P.S. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. I totally just plugged my own podcast. LOL. <laughs> well, dude, we, James, we have 14 Barney, Barney reviews James. on Facebook. I've never read a single one of these. I didn't know we could get reviews. Oh, I know we could. Oh. 
It's more like recommended. Like like people recommend it. Well, maybe maybe not the next couple of weeks, but after that we can start. We can read a bunch of them. We'll read. We'll take one intro, intro, uh, intro, intro, one section of banter and would you rather's, and just read all fourteen right in a row, shotgun style. Shotgun. I mean, some of these are going to be a little long. Hey, look at there's Jim right there, April twenty fifth. Hey, Jim. Good we to found see you. we found your Facebook review. All right, so it is now twenty minutes in. We got to get rolling. Put the phone down. Oh, I was reading what Jim said. He put the, said, put the phone my down. only bummer is Mark once stated empty nature should have more time to serve because they have more time. Check back put, with me when you arrive, Mark. I will check back with you. Put, put the phone down. Let's, it's down. It's time to dive. Oh, because we have account. to open the envelope. It's an envelope. I'm a little and, nervous. And we're 20 minutes in. That's what I was going to say. Okay, so that's something you always say is you always announce the time when we jump in the conversation. Yes. So, <laughs> so that way that... We know. I don't we know. know that you know that we know that you know. I don't know. That's what it is. I have All no right. idea. So, th- All right. So we had the question from Beth. I'll let you open it. We, so, so we, we had the, the question, question from Beth. And now we have a new question, which I have that question over here on the floor yep. still. Which we made fun of how long the question was that Beth and, wrote. And, and Janiel this is like showed, five times as long, Janiel right? showed, Yeah, Janiel showed it to me, and it is stupid Wait, long. wait, wait. She showed you the questions? Like, you no. know what the question is? No, no. She showed me the piece of paper from about 30 feet away. <laughs> My eyes say it's not that good. Anyway, so here we are. It's an actual, it's like... It's an actual notebook paper. Eight and a half, uh, eight and a half by 11. <laughs> they can see it. Oh, my goodness, girl. That's a whole piece. <laughs> they can see it. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you know what I'm saying. That looks like you had to write this for detention. <laughs> like, that's detention sentences I right will there. not call Mark and Chris silly. I will not. Oh, it's just repeating. Okay. <laughs> oh, we all got right. a verse from judges. That's all I can see is a verse from oh, judges. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Is this polygamy? Oh, I don't know. All right, here we go. Judges 21-25. In those days... There was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Many people now are saying that we should all be able to do what each person thinks is right. There should be no laws prohibiting anyone. Mm. This idea is being shared by Christians as well, saying that we are moving backwards by having laws that keep people from making their own choices. What would those laws be? What do you mean? Okay, continue reading, continue reading. I won't interrupt, I won't interrupt. Go ahead. You just interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord, which we've used this on our podcast several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, for as the heavens are higher than the, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Um, so as Christians, how should we... Uh, how blah, 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 blah. rewind uh, so as Christians how should this be approached in our world right now okay so I think I know what what Janiel's saying with the fact that we've made laws let people make choices it's like there's a lot of accusation of Christian nationalism and that we should not be making specific Christian laws and forcing laws that are just for Christians no on everybody right is that kind of what that, she means that is not what she's saying no but I read that the idea we're going backwards yeah, many people are saying now that we should all be able to do what each other thinks. There should be no laws prohibiting anyone. This idea is shared by Christians. So Christians are saying there should be no law right. on anybody and say that we are moving backwards, having laws that keep people from making their own choices. That's what Christians are saying. Okay. And she's asking, how do we approach this? So basically, how do we approach the you do you movement? Yes. Uh, of and I'm basing this off of the scripture in Judges where it says in those days there was no king. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And then we come down here and she says basically what God say. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways, which tells me that I think I think she's asking the question that um, should basically we continue to abide by the laws of God and not have these choices that some people are making, right? Um <laughs> Like, uh, I'm trying to think. Of That's what I'm trying example. to think. I'm like, what specific laws are we talking okay, so about? Okay, so like abortion, right? Roe versus Wade, okay. right? So, Which recording that just got overturned in today, the Supreme Court this d- morning. Date of recording. Yep. Um, so the law says, or it said that abortion was okay, federal law, which is not technically God's law because God says murder is a sin, right? Right. And we should protect the innocence of the babies and so on and so forth. So in the light of that, where they're making laws, they say, well, they want no laws so they can do whatever they want, what is right in their own eyes, which we know that there has to be a standard. Right. So she's asking, how do we approach the 
the thought process of even Christians where they don't want a standard. They don't want God's standard is okay. what I believe she's asking. Well, there's there's two different approaches that we have to take. One is the fact of, in those days, there was no king in Israel, which we have no king in America. However, we do have laws that we have to abide by. Sure. Even, da- even down to, you know, simple things like speed limits and jaywalkings and paying taxes and making sure you do this, that, the other. Like, there, there are laws that we do have to follow as Americans, but... It also says that everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In other words, truth was relative. Like, my truth is my truth, and your truth is your truth. Right. And it gets hard because there are some universal truths that we do follow, where it's like we can flat out say, you know, it's not okay to go kill somebody. But where do those standards come from? I would say morality has to stem from somewhere. There has to be a moral law giver. So I would say it stems from God. So I think what she's asking, though, is not so much saying kings are are like man-made laws, but more like the whole do what's right in your own eyes. And I just keep going back to comparing why she put both scriptures there and knowing my wife, um, that she's wanting us to talk about, I think more of the morality issue, right? Where, where we're saying dad, you do you boo. Like Christians are saying you do you, whatever seems right to you. That's fine. You're right. So, so let's break that down in terms of what are some things that People say, you just do whatever you want to do, and I'm going to do whatever I want to do, and it's totally okay. Well, I know one thing that I hear a lot of Christians say is um, um, uh, homosexuality. Thank you. That's the okay. word I was looking for. So it's like, well, I hear a lot of Christians say, well, it doesn't really affect me, and so you do what's, what, whatever you want to do, and I ain't going to say nothing. Just don't put it in my face. Okay. And, and should that be our approach, Right. Because the morality of God, right? The standard of God says, no, this is wrong. And we are commanded to go to all the world with the good news to make disciples. Right. But I do think God does call us to coexist with even people who don't follow after him. Because in Judges, it was a theocracy. It was, it's still a republic sure, style. Sure, but sure, sure. They followed God. America doesn't follow God. But I don't think she's... I think you're, you're, you're focusing in on a tree of the verse. Right. And she's got a whole concept. She's trying to just say, hey, this is where this is coming from, where people did what was right in their own eyes. And based on her paragraph, that's what people are doing now. It's not so much who's ruling, right? It's not right. Who, who, if they're God following or not. It's saying Christians are saying and moving backwards, that we're moving backwards by having certain laws. We should do what each person thing is right. And that's yeah. hard because that's, that, that's the American way where if, if you don't want a gun, don't have a gun. If you want to be a, you know, right. prepper, but be a prepper. Again, that's, that's beyond. With uh, drag that, shows that, that's, and whatever. That's she's talking about the morality aspect, I believe. Okay. And I keep coming back to morality because the Isaiah verse where it talks about his ways are higher than our ways, right? God don't care about guns, right? If you want a gun, if you don't want a gun for whatever reason, right? Okay. Well, maybe he only cares about the reason why you want a gun, right? But the fact that the gun itself, it's more about the morality of it all, right? So, okay, where so do maybe, we, where, maybe this is part of it, right? So lately, what's been very popular is you've been hearing about these drag queens going into churches, elementary schools churches. and churches and public libraries and doing these readings for kids or um, put on these shows. Like they're, they're, they're basically trying to make these things happen. So the question is, is do we just sit back and do nothing? And just like, if you want to do it, go ahead. It doesn't really matter. Right. Like, do we stand is up? Is that more so it? I guess it's, do we stand up for morality or do we not? Do we stand up for morality as God lays it out? Or do we just say, I'll just keep to myself and you do. And I think that's hard because the second you start saying the words, I'm going to stand up for morality and make sure that we protect our kids. It seems like the second you do that, you get accused of Christian nationalism. But she's not saying that. Okay. But they got accused of a lot. I mean, the term Christian was not an endearing term back with the disciples. Right. (laughs) They got accused of too. Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself was accused of being Satan. I mean, so accused just because you get accused doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing, right? Jesus said the world will hate you because they first hated me. Right. So you stand for his ways because his ways are higher than our ways, right? His thoughts are higher than that. So we stand for his ways, the biblical doctrine. And you want to read it again? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and by standing for the biblical doctrine, we are standing, the biblical doctrine, not our own doctrine, a biblical doctrine. I want to make sure I say that several times. Biblical doctrine and God's laws and God's ways should we stand for those or should we just let it be? Let it be. You know, and, and when you explain it that way, that's a conversation I've had with Beth about like uh, LGBTQ rights. Sure. Right. And, and the uh, redefinition of marriage. Sure. Like there's a lot of Christians that would say, you know, we have to fight to, to keep family 
the written the way God was, like the uh, traditional views of family, traditional sure. views of marriage. Okay. Yeah. And we have to fight for the legality of that. Sure. And then there's other people who are like, we just let them do whatever they want to do. So like, is that kind of more? I don't think she's talking about fighting for the legality of it, though. Well, I think part of it, because it's how should Christians approach, how, 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 so as Christians, how should this be approached in our world right now? Right, right. But I don't think it's so much of approaching the legal, the legalities, the laws, but how everybody perceives morality. Okay. Right. So again, I keep coming back to the morality of things. So it's not like, you know, keeping the family structure, we need to have laws in place. She's not talking about the laws. She's talking about the hearts, right? Of Christians, not of the world, but of Christians, I believe. And how we should approach this topic as Christians with other Christians and with the world. And I think we covered part of this. Um, I forget which podcast it was. Uh, let's There's been a lot of them. Um, is it okay for Christians to judge? Mm, mm-hmm. I think is where we covered a lot of this. Of um, Yes, as a, as a Christian, right? We are supposed to hold each other to the laws of God, right? And judge each other's fruits. Judge each other's fruits. Not, and it's more of an enforcer, like we talked about in that episode. Whereas with the world, we can't judge them so much by God's laws because we already know that they've disobeyed God laws, God's laws. But we have to more approach them from the fact that they need Christ in their lives, right? And so right. we got to speak Christ into their lives. And so I think. We really need to split this question of morality. Well, no, because she's not talking about morality. She's, she's flat out said laws right here. There should be right. no laws prohibiting but, anyone. Right. But read it in the context, right? Many people now are saying that we should not be able to do, or we should be able to do what we want, right? And tie it in with this. And tie it in with this. She's talking about God is the standard for morality. Right. I don't think she's talking so much, as much about laws as about choices, is what I think. And see, and I think it has more to do with, and this is where, you know, this gets hard because how are we going to have a conversation where two different things? So, well, just, just so I'll follow you. I'll follow I'll your say, lead. Just trust I'll me because it's my wife. Okay. I'll follow your lead. <laughs> just trust me because I'm pretty sure that's exactly where she's coming from. It's the morality. And I think this stems from, this question stems from probably some of the stuff that she has encountered on Facebook even today uh, with the Roe versus Wade and how Christians are responding to it and how the world is responding to it. And what does the morality of God say? What, what, what are the standards, right? And I think that uh, for Christians, and, and she made this point, even um, there, there's some Christians that are kind of like taking it and rubbing it in people's faces, the fact that Roe versus Wade was overturned. Mm-hmm. Like, ha, 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 see, see, see. And she, I know she said this, this is what she said. Uh, she doesn't believe that is correct. She believes that is wrong of Christians to do that, to kind of sh- smear it in people's faces, right? Because it's almost a... Uh, a pride haughtiness kind of thing. Like, Hey, look at this. It's like, finally look, we dead. Won. Yeah. And then she said, likewise, it's also wrong for the fact that Christians are saying, Oh, women's rights have been totally ignored and yada, yada, yada. And this is a loss for women. And, and that's what it's talking. So she's talking about that mindset of or that concept or mindset of have we lost, I guess, let me rephrase it this way. Are we becoming more like the days of Noah? Okay where immorality ruled the land. I guess that's where I would circle back to the question. And I, I really hope that I'm on the right track. And, and to follow what? that, but there is something to be said about us as Christians. I'm text her. I'm we're, I'll just say we might need a text her. But as Christians, we are supposed to influence, literally influence culture. Sure. And we influence culture by being in the hands and feet of Jesus. And this is where I've been doing a lot of my own reading and research into the early church in terms of not the early church, but more like right now I'm in like the 16th, 17th century. And with that, you know, you see the Christian culture taking over everything to the point now where Christianity, people are being forced to be Christians now. Sure. All of a sudden. And, well, yes. And at what point recently. is is that good versus not? Because even Jesus said the world's going to hate you. Be at peace with one another. Right. Love your neighbor. Sure. And, and you, you know, and, and I, I'm a firm believer as a Christian, we're supposed to love all of our neighbor. It doesn't matter who they are, what orientation that they have, this, that, or the other. I'm supposed to raise my kids a certain way. Sure. But I'm also supposed to look out for the betterment of other kids. And this is where I have a, a friend of mine who hates this part of Christianity, where if if I view, uh, okay, here, here's, here's a good one, right? Um, gender dysphoria among kids. Now the conversation is, is if a kid, which 
Lucy's this way a little bit is if a kid says if they're, you know, born biologically gender is a, as a girl, but they're like, sure. I want to be a boy at the age of three. Sure. Like, okay, yeah, let them be a boy. Cause that's what they want to be. They're in the wrong body. And in reality, no, they're just trying to figure it out. Cause if that was the case, like, um, I get, yeah, you were right. I guess morality. Okay. <laughs> but with that, you know, a lot of people are saying that we should just let the kid be whoever they want to be right. and do puberty blockers and, uh, sex changes and all these different things. Sure. And a kid who hasn't even like, we, we are now forcing these kids to be someone who biologically and genetically they are not. And I think right. of like the Matt Walsh documentary that just came out. Yeah, uh, I haven't watched it yet because you have to pay for it. Um, about what is a woman? He came out with a documentary. Yes, what is I, a woman? Yes, and he was I walking around. And granted, there's been a lot of people that have been attacking him like crazy for sure. it. He's he's asking the question of you, you, define you're, the term woman. You're you're, you're fighting for women's rights. So yeah. what makes what a woman mean? a woman? What makes a man a man? Sure. And we're starting to lose those those differences. So right. in the court system, in in the judicial system, and in the law system, that's how America functions. If we are arguing for you know, male is male, female is female. This is the way it's supposed to work. Should we fight not to just for the the love of our neighbor, but should we fight for the laws that protect those freedoms? It, because as a Christian, we know that not everyone's going to live their life as a Christian. Right. You can't force anyone to be a sure. Christian. That that's a choice that you know that that they <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a choice that they make. But God also opens their eyes to that. We, sure. we understand how that works. Well, we don't understand how that works, but we've had those conversations. But with all of these things. At what point do we just talk about morality and then because eventually morality becomes laws in sure. America. Like that's just how it works. Morality's become laws. So yes, like, to, a, to a point, yeah. Right. Like right now we're fighting on like gun rights, right? Like like should we you know, double down on gun rights and outlaw guns everywhere and ban these certain types of guns, ban this types of cartridge? Do we do all these different things or should we not? Well, eventually everyone's different opinions make it into, you know, literally for us, it would be the marketplace. Sure. And the marketplace is the court system. Sure. And for laws. So so, so it's more of when we deal with morality, when we deal with laws, I think it's more the fact of, you know, we want to follow after God and all these different things. Yeah. Do we sit back and let whatever happens happen or do we infiltrate and do we, because, you know, the separation of church and state was to keep the state out of the church, not right. the church out of sure. the state. Because the church actually, yes. a Baptist church wrote Thomas Jefferson and asked for a wall of separation so that right. way they can't demand right. what the church is supposed to do. So let me go ahead. Janiel's quantifying what her question is a little See, bit more. Normally she, she quantifies it when we talk in person. So yeah. she says, uh, uh, morality, she guesses, about how Christians who should love God's way but are walking around with opposing views, really. Oh, definitely. Okay, so and, that's just wait, and, discipleship. And how that should be addressed in love in this culture we live in. Gotcha. Okay, so less to do with, with infiltrating the laws in the court system, but right. more as Christians. More of Christians. How do we deal with this in a loving manner in the culture? Um, in my, bit, my my opinion, is it's conversations. It's not over sure. DMs. It's not over reacting. Because, you know, like there's people like, you know, people that we love. Yeah. Specifically, let's talk about Roe versus Wade, where you look like you just swipe through people's stories real oh, quick yeah. or reels. You see people on both sides of the argument. Oh, yeah. And... But a lot of times it's not just a oh you you think abortion is health care so you must you, you you must not really be a Christian you must hate right. people you well, must you you you, hurt, and, you you hate babies and you can get into the brass tacks. that's tax. not what it always what it is right you can get into the brass tax of well no you're hurting the mother right and so I'm loving the mother by having the abortion or fight for abortion and then likewise you can say no I'm loving the baby who is unborn doesn't get a choice and I'm fighting for the and because I love the baby right and that's where mm -hmm. I think the opposing fences are. In the Christian right, realm. We got to get down to the stem. And because at the end of the day, I, I, there, there, there it is at the end of the day. Uh, but but end. with this whole conversation, there's a lot of Christians who, in my opinion, view abortion as one of those things that if we're trying to take care of mothers. We're trying to take care of those sure. who are in poverty. You know, it takes $40,000 to raise a kid. So if a kid's born into poverty, we're just continuing this vicious cycle. So they're trying to protect people's lives and livelihood and, and betterment of that. But I think that also goes back to, okay, well, why is that broken? And a lot of it goes back to what is the American dream? Right. And I think we well, have this dream of, of I think it stems health, wealth, and prosperity. I think it stems beyond that, though. I don't think this is a problem just for America. This is a world problem, right? We see it in Canada. We see it over mm -hmm. in Europe. I mean, everywhere. This is a problem. And I think that, um, like you said, I think it starts with conversations 
but it has to go a little bit beyond the conversations that Janelle and I were talking about this. So I'm glad we talked about it a little bit, Janelle, before. Like, I didn't know the question, <laughs> but I'm glad we had this conversation earlier. But she said that uh, so many Christians in this Roe versus Wade, right? Mm-hmm. They want to be the first to speak up, but not the first to interact and, and you know, the uh, the helping of these women. And, and the churches and are doing it. their yeah, hands. Keep and going. Be, they're not being the a hand, little bit. Yeah, they're not being the hands and feet of Christ, right? And so... And I agree with you, Neil. That's the problem, right? Is people go, oh, yeah, abortion's wrong, and you shouldn't do it. All right, I'm going back to my hut. And and that's where a lot of that stems from. Right. And the fact of, you know, if we're saying that we're pro-life, kind of going back to the Andrew Wood conversation, yeah. we're pro-life. We're from the, the, the womb to the grave, the cradle to the grave. Right. And fun, fun story. Um, Beth was down. She, she texted me earlier. She's down hanging out with her sister, and they were just at a – they're in a public pool hanging out. Sure. And a reporter was – Asking people what their thoughts was in Roe versus Wade, and they asked Beth, and I said, "Oh, baby, wrong person." Did you to lay ask. it down? <laughs> and so she gave them the thought of like, "We're supposed to do this and this and this." And she asked a follow up question, and she goes, "You're right. We do need involved in foster care. That's why I adopted my five girls why, that I'm a part of. That's why I got five girls and before then, I got married." And then, uh, how did they word it? Um, they, basically, they were like, "Is are are you happy with your decision, or something like that?" And I'm like, "What kind of question?" Is that? Are you happy with your adoption decision? Is that what they were asking? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you happy with your decision of, of fostering and adopting these girls? And it's uh, like, yeah. if I'm pro-life, yeah, I'm, right. I'm happy. Now, it does, is it easy? No. And, and is it not, hard? Not everybody, Absolutely. Not everybody's called to it, right? Just like we always say, not everybody is gifted in that well, area. check this out. This is the best quote. Not everyone is called to foster, but everyone's called to foster care, taking care of widows and orphans in yes. distress. So how, yes. do, how do we get involved And what's that? Because we know in the early church, they didn't just all go out and know that the church took up a collection, right? And distributed it to the widows and the children and the poor. All right. The, so it was not always being there, right, physically, but sometimes it was being there financially, right? Because you may not have that gifting. And then sometimes it's being there, but not adopting, but being in the caring part. And sometimes it's being in the adoption process, right? Yeah. It's, and I, it's a little bit of both. I feel like a lot of Christians in, the, in America, we, we value comfort over that. So we'll use sure. the excuse of, oh, well, I'm just not called to it. When in reality, well, it's like, well, what are we, what, what, what does it mean to be called to But here's the thing, this, if you're more you know? worried about comfort, then you aren't called to it. Wait, if, you if you're wor- more worried about the comfort and the inconvenience that it would cause you, you're right. You are not gifted to go adopt because your heart is in the wrong spot. Oh, you're, I agree you're, with that. You're, you're based on comfort and about your pleasure and not about these kids. So, yeah, I would definitely agree with you. You're not gifted in it. You're not called in it. <laughs> like, because the people that are have the heart, they're like, it doesn't matter if I've, you know, they eat me out of hustle home. I got to have 10 jobs to take care of these kids. I want to do that. Like Beth, right? Beth mm-hmm. took on five kids as a single, never married, Virgin, sorry, Beth, virgin mother, right? Sure Young mother. Four year old knew about sex more than she did. Right. And took on five girls. She was called. She had the heart. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. And she, got, but she has the heart and the gifting to deal with it, just like you do, right? You're the same way. I, I am. And am not, and it's not to do with comfort. But you it's, also love my family. Oh, I love your, you. Love I love the kids, snot you know? out of your family. Um, but I am not at this point, right? I'm not saying I won't be called to go and adopt. But at this point, me personally in my financial family situation, it, it is not feasible for me to bring on somebody else, right? Because single income household, and it's just not feasible in the space that we have, right? Right now, we have my son sleeping in a basement. <laughs> I mean, it's a, I just don't have the room. And it's not about the comfort, right? It's about the, I want to give the child the best. So because I can't do that right now, I support the ministries that can. And then if God calls me to it later on in life, I, I'm willing to go. And Janiel's the same way. She has the heart. And if God called us and said, hey, I want you to go adopt this kid today, we'd be, we'd be on board and doing it. But so far, God has not called us to go do that. Not that we're not gifted, but we have not been called to it. And I think there's a, there is a distinction. You don't just go randomly adopting people because you're like, oh, this seems like a good idea. But then again, you don't not do it because of comfort reasons either. Right. I, I just also don't want people to have the, like, because, you know, we can give a thousand excuses. Like, sure. What, you know, do, you, you never feel ready to get married. You never feel ready to have a kid. There's always setbacks that we always have. Sure. And so many times that we choose, and I'm not saying this about you, I'm sure. saying just in general, we choose comfort and we make excuses. Like, and that's why I love, love my wife when she says, I was in a two bedroom apartment and she took in three girls. Sure. Like, and she had a, a snot ton of community around her to help her. Yeah, but it was all up to her, though, still. Like, but she had a smash. Basically, almost lost her job because but, of it. But, right. But here comes down to um, predestination. Uh, <laughs> of where God had already knew that he had a group of people to help her out, already handpicked 
before she ever made the decision to go and adopt way before he was already grooming people to be there for her. Right. And that's why it's called a calling. Right. But it wasn't all there until she did it. And not everybody is called when people are called. There are different gifts, right? Not everybody's called to adoption. There's calls for pastors, priests, all these different gifts that people have callings to. And not everybody is, is for foster. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I want to make sure I hit people because sometimes people, and I, I love the snot out of what you and Beth do. I really do. But sometimes people in that situation, they're like, why isn't everybody doing this? And it's like, okay, well, sometimes there are reasons, right, of not feeling called to do it, not being, I won't say ready, but um, you don't want to put a child in a household where they don't get the care that they need, right? You don't want to put them back in the same situation they came out of. If you're an abusive alcoholic, you don't want to go adopt. You're not called to adopt. Right. And yes, but that's an extreme situation though. No, but it is, but you have to be careful, right? Because it's almost like, um, it's like the serving thing, right? You, you come down and you go, Oh, well, if you're not serving something wrong with you, well, no, not necessarily. Right. If you're not adopting, if you're not fostering, there's something wrong with you. It's like, no, not, not necessarily. Right. And so there are different gifts. There's different roles of the body. And I want to stress that. Right. And every role is a pivotal part of it, but we can't say, well, I don't want to be any part of it. We mm-hmm. do have a responsibility to the widow and the orphan. We do have that responsibility. And what that looks like is between you and God and how you want to help that community of fostering. Okay, so so let me transition to a different thought here for, for a little bit so that we're not just stuck on Roe sure, versus Wade. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm trying to think of what are other things that people believe that anybody should be able to do, whether they think it's, I mean, if, if they think it's right, they should be able to do it. Sexual encounters. Okay. Even among the church. All right, right, so lean into that a little bit. So sexual encounters of, you know, God has a, a pretty clear, <laughs> even throughout the New Testament, about adulterers and, and um, uh, people who lust and all these things won't enter the kingdom of heaven, right? And yet we have Christians sleeping with their boyfriends and girlfriends out there, living with their boyfriends and girlfriends, putting themselves that temptation upon themselves where they could fall into that. And that's against what God is saying, right? God is saying, no, this is, this is a sacred thing. It's meant for a man and a wife. This is not for X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. So that's another instance. No, I'd agree with that. And, and to continue with that, I mean, I don't know if you've heard of the term polyamorous. Polyamorous, is that the right right term, I think? Um, where basically you have multiple partners and they each do different things. So like you'll like this is growing like crazy sure. apparently, where you'll have like your you'll have like your husband and then like um from from two different sides. Like like a wife could have a husband and like three other boyfriends or like four boyfriends and each one fulfills a different role for her. Right. Like I met someone who she was married, had a kid and she's from Minnesota, but she also had a boyfriend here in South Bend and she traveled back and forth and the husband was totally cool with it. Yeah. And then it's like, like the open relationships type thing. But that that's still about. in God's eyes. That's called adultery, I'm like, right? that's not okay. So, so how right. do we handle that? So I like, think do we force people to follow after what God no, says? No, it's not a force, right? It's the same. It's the same process and the same message we have for every sinner. Now, if it's a Christian, now there is a process. There's a church discipline aspect, right? Mm-hmm. So it goes back to the judging others, right? That whole episode we just had. Because if you call yourself a Christian, you, you, you need to follow after God. We're going to hold. Yeah, we're going to hold. We're the enforcers. We're supposed to enforce God's laws with each other. And the other thing too is, there's normally a reason why God said what He said. It sure. It always wasn't just a control factor. Sure. No. And it's not like I read a thing of uh, one of the most common reasons why people don't attend church or, or become a Christian is because uh, it's just a list of rules that stop you from being able to do the fun things, right? So. It is fun. Even the Bible says. But how many times do those fun things end up hurting? Well, the Bible says that even sin is pleasurable for a season, right? For a season. But I can tell you I know people in my my own personal life that enjoyed this fun season, and now here comes reality hitting around where they've got multiple kids with multiple people, and their life's a complete and utter wreck, and uh, and they're just lost, right? They're they're at Mm -hmm. the end of their rope. They have no hope. They're, They're just like. Uh, in despair, right? They're, they're depressed. They have this anxiety and it's, and not that all anxiety and depression is, is brought on by our sinful actions, but in this case it would be right. All, all the anxiety and depression comes on to these people because of actions that they made and poor choices that they made. Right. Mm -hmm. And so our, our goal for the world should always be to proclaim Christ, right? We are all sinners, but there's a savior and he died for you. And all you have to do is accept his free gift. That's it. And then after after that, 
Then we start teaching, right? Not commanding because we are not the judge. We're just teachers. Making disciples means you're a quote-unquote rabbi, right? Mm-hmm. Making disciples of Christ. You're just teaching. And in that teaching, you should teach them of all the standards of God and everything that's wrong, right? And then once they start bearing fruit, then we hold each other accountable, right? Mm-hmm. We, are, we are accountable to each other for all aspects of life. This is why we are meant to be in what we call the tribe, right? Yep. So that we can ha- hold each other accountable. And we talk about what discipleship actually yeah, is. Yeah, we've had lots of these conversations recently, but yeah. So I, I guess that's where I would stand with it, right? Of, of how should we deal with this in a loving manner? We should deal with it in the same way we've, we've always been called to deal with it, in a manner of gentleness and love. When it's with a brother or sister, we do it, as Galatians 6.1 says, in gentleness and love so that we ourselves may not fall into the same temptation, right? Mm-hmm. And with the world, well, they ain't got God's standards anyways, so uh, there's nothing to hold them accountable to other than, hey, you're a sinner and, and you're in the middle of the road right now about to get hit, hit by a bus and I'm screaming at you, get out of the road, get out of the road, get out of the road. Get out. And I'm just going to keep repeating myself, get out of the road. You need Jesus, you need Jesus, you need Jesus, you need Jesus. Every chance I get to help them see that they need Jesus, I'm going to show them. I'm going to be like, okay, well, you believe this, but as as a Christian and, and under God's laws and his morality and the standard of morality that he set forth, this is how I believe. And I didn't come to this understanding on my own, but it was given to me through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and others mm-hmm. as I was being a disciple, right? And I was out, as that discipleship process was taking place. And you can do the same thing too, right? That's what it's all about, right? Yeah, and I'm actually reading this really fascinating article, and it's it talks about U.S. religious groups disagree on five key moral issues. They 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 listed out a lot more than just five key moral issues, but you know some that are standing out to me here that I, I that I think are fascinating are like doctor assisted doctor assisted suicides, mm, which we talked about euthanasia. Yep. So 43 percent of Protestants say that's okay. Um, cloning animals, um, 28% say it's okay. Gay lesbian relationships, 41% say it's okay. Uh, this is just Protestant, not sure, Catholic, sure. Mormon, Jewish, sure. or no religion. Um, having a baby outside of marriage, 47% of Protestants say, yep, that's okay. That's cool. So, I, yeah, I think that's divorce, uh, the death penalty. I think that's a big one right now is the conversation of is the death penalty mm-hmm. actually morally okay? Sure. Um, but you know, those aren't your day to day ones. Like your day to day ones are like polygamy, extramarital affair. Um, sex outside of marriage, gambling, stem cell research, um, just things that people think are totally okay, which we've, we've talked about a lot of these when it comes sure. to like alcohol, for example. Yeah. You know, some a lot of Protestants will say, you know, the, drinking alcohol is a sin, and then other ones will say, no, it's not. And so... And, w- and we broke it down. Of, well, here's the line. <laughs> we, we, that's right. We've we broken it down. And that's where it's hard because the question is, is okay, so which one of these have we created our own pharisaical fence around things mm. to protect us when in reality, then we, then we turn them into laws of a Christian. Well, so yeah. And, like, and, like, like, sure. You know, like gambling or like uh, smoking or like alcohol. Well, where, so you know, taken to their extreme. They're all terrible. I think smoking in general is bad, but, it but is. okay. So let's take it right. Let's take it from the, the perspective of, we'll say smoking. Okay. We'll say smoking, you know, uh, and I'll say smoking. Because I was an ex-smoker. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm, you can speak I'm there. Into it. I'm speaking into it, right? It's horrible for your body. And what does God say, right? We're supposed to be good stewards mm-hmm. of what he's given us. And that our body is a living temple. Now, you got the uh, the people that are um, very conservative will say, see, the Bible says your body's a living temple, so you shouldn't do anything. And then they no go No tattoos, pick no piercings. Yeah, and so that's the, the catch-all for everything. And I would say... No, contextually, that's not what that was saying. Yes, it is, but it's more talking about you don't have to go to the temple to worship God because the Holy Spirit's in within you, and he's your intercessor to God, mm-hmm. going to the throne of God on behalf of you. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's your helper. I mean, we talked about this as well. Right. What's and, and I also think, you know, smoking has a lot more to do, too, with not loving your neighbor as well because, you know, by then you're separating yourself from other so, people, well, secondhand smoke, but and it, all these different things. It's also about not loving your neighbor, right, if we break that down. Right, it's not about loving your neighbor when you're smoking, even if you're not around people, because there are people that love you, mm-hmm. and you're saying my needs take precedence over your needs for me to be in your life, right? Because it's going to shorten my lifespan. And this is coming from an ex-smoker. <laughs> this is why I stopped smoking. Um, so, is it necessarily a sin? Well, it could be. I, I would say it's a problem. It's a big problem. But same with you know drinking, right? We 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 put the line out there. Right, scripture says no hard alcohol and don't be drunk with wine. 
That's what it says, right? And so then we have to define the terms of, okay, what is hard alcohol? And what is being drunk with wine? Is it being tipsy? Is it being like full out blind drunk? I mean, and we broke that down in our, is it okay for Christians to drink alcohol? And, and there is a line, right? Don't be drunk with wine. A lot of it is used wisdom and discretion. That's the line, right? Yep. But we also talked about, well, a guy my size could probably drink three beers and a guy your size could probably drink a beer and a half before we started feeling like, ooh, tipsy. And we should always be, um, we should always keep our minds sharp so that we could have our defenses up from the attacks of the devil, right? Yep. And what that means is when you drink and you start getting to that point where your mind's turning, right? A little tipsy, I would say that at that point, you are susceptible to bad decisions ungodly decisions and we should never be at a st- standpoint where we can have that right that same thing why i say in our episode two jesus would jesus smoke pot mm-hmm. i would say no because it alters our mind state and we could we could be susceptible to making ungodly choices that's the same reason why i say men and women shouldn't live together before marriage because you're putting yourself as the temptation it's it's a you're putting yourself up for that temptation of having unacceptable and ungodly behavior so it's a protection thing, right? We got to set standards and lines that we do not cross for the protection so we don't fall into sin. And if we fall into sin, we need to be quick to confess our sin as Christians. That same standard does not fall for unbelievers. It goes back into, for unbelievers, I can use science to be like, yeah, smoking is really unhealthy for you. And here's the studies behind it. Here's the scientific studies. So you should do that as a unbeliever, right? But I'm not going to get into the morality of why you shouldn't because they won't understand the morality of loving your neighbor. They're already out for themselves, right? Right. And same with getting drunk, right? Here's the studies of what happens when you get drunk to your body, your liver, the bad choices you can make driving drunk, get a car accident, kill somebody. These are all the bad choices that could happen if you do this. So you shouldn't do it for these reasons, not as much as the morality side of it. So to to start wrapping it up then, how do we handle that inside mm. of the church? Because there are different, and we'll talk about different denominations here in a couple episodes. There are denominations out there that are LGBTQ affirming. Sure. There are other ones that are out there that are, um, for, for lack of a better word, totally cool with um, shrooms and right. psychedelics and all those different things. There's other ones. Pass the bong, man, while we worship the Lord. There's other ones where there's, like, like you know, Lutheran, for example, like Martin Luther's wife, like she, he, he bragged that she, he was, she was the best brewer in all of Germany. Right. That's saying something coming out of Germany. Charles Spurgeon, drinking bit bourbon and, and smoking a, a, smoking a, a cigar. cigar. The glory of God. I mean, and so how, wh- where the question A is, where do we draw the line between Christian freedom and not? And then how do we come alongside those? And this is where it gets hard because if it's a Christian freedom choice, I could be doing something, and you could look at it. I don't, I don't know anything off the top of my head, but I sure. could be doing something. You could be looking at it going, I don't know if that's a, such a great idea. Whereas I can say, you know, you know, worry about yourself. I'm I'm okay because I'm sure. I'm fine doing this. Sure. Because but they're doing their part, right? If they're mentioning it to you, if they think it's wrong, they're doing their part. They're supposed to go to their brother, right, and hold them accountable. Only if they offend you or if they no, sin no, against no. you. No, no, no. If there's a sin, right, we're supposed to hold well, each right, other the question, accountable but the, and judge but the thing by, by the is, fruit, though, right? The thing is, what is this? Like, if someone comes to me, so, like, man, I saw that you had a beer the other day. That was just wrong, and I say, prove it. Well, no, see, yeah, see, that's the wrong mindset of it, right? In my opinion, right? This is just my opinion. Okay. My, my, my mindset is not prove it. My mindset is, okay, I appreciate you coming up and saying this to me. Now let's look at what the Scripture says, and let's figure it out together, right? And open it up for conversation rather than just talk to the hand because now we get to that point where we had that episode on sinful excuses where sin or not it comes across as a sinful excuse of prove it you're like i ain't, I ain't listening to you when we could be coming a stumbling block for them instead right and this is where we have to have those conversations to know where we're at because we don't know if we're a stumbling block we don't know if if they think we're just given a sinful excuse right we may not be but that's where we had to sit down and have the conversations and look at the standard together right we don't just go and fly by our opinions. And it all has to do with our heart and our attitude towards it, right? If I'm coming at you saying, Mark, I saw you drinking beer, and you're going to you're gonna go to hell, and I'm putting myself up on a pedestal, and I'm trying to degrade you, right. that's, that's not right. How, and that's normally how it goes that's down. That's not right. That and what does that do? That says, well, screw you. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, which isn't right either because you're not being loving to them, and they're not being loving to you. So you've totally missed it, right? And this is why I keep pushing Galatians 6, one. When you approach a brother or deal with a brother trapped in sin, Right, whether it's sin or not, but, and, but, 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 but me but, as a person, I think right. it's sin. I should be coming to you in gentleness and love, right? That I may not fall into the same temptation. So if I approach you that way, you're more apt to say, "Well, this is where I got 
this is where my line comes and from. And that's the way it should be, but most many times it's not. Right, but you know, does does and I'm not saying just I'm not saying someone did that to me recently. No, 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 and I, this is all uh, hypothetical. Hypothetical, it right? really is, yeah. But if somebody came up to you and said, uh, you know, X Y Z, and wasn't loving, and you fire back and snap back at him, does that make that right? Who's in the wrong? Both of you. But if somebody comes snapping at you, and you a gentle word turneth away wrath, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Proverbs said, if you say, oh, you know what, brother, I appreciate I appreciate you coming. Here's where I get what, where my my freedom in Christ. Here's where I I get that from, like we're drinking, right? It says, don't, don't be drunk with wine, don't drink hard liquor. I had a beer; it did not affect me. It did not change my state of mind. I believe that I was okay in doing so, and that's this is the scriptural basis that I have to back it up. What is your scriptural basis for the accusation and having that conversation? Right, showing them this is why we have to not only be ready to give an account to unbelievers. But we should we should be able to give account to believers, right? Because we're mm -hmm. holding each other accountable. So I think we have to have the mindset and heart set of not only am I going to approach somebody who I think is sinning in love, but I'm going to respond to those accusations in love. And I agree with that. And I agree with that. And that's why it's, there's so many times where specifically even on this show, and this is something I appreciate that um, Pastor Michael preaches at the church that Beth and I are at. He, sure. he teaches worldview and mindset and thinking so much. Because when it comes to a lot of these things, you know, you talk about, you know, if, if a brother is caught up in sin, go against him. Every single Christian will have a different different definition of sin. Like right. I think of the the world that that I came out of and Beth came out of, the conservative, independent, fundamental Baptist church. Sure, there's certain people in that group that will say I'm I'm living in sin because my hair is so touching my ears. Uh, yeah. There's P other ones. PCC brother. <laughs> there's some there's some dudes who like certain churches. Guys are not allowed to wear. No. Shorts. We got tattoos. We have tattoos. You and I both do. Or, you know, swimsuits are like, you, right. got, you can't, you know, no mixed swimming. You have to have certain sure. types of swimsuits. Sure. You have certain types of this. You have to have certain types of dress and clothes and music and all these different things. Yeah. There's so many times where people call a sin what God never calls a sin. It's a pharmaceutical right. And, and that's why that's that's why I like the Martin Luther where it's like where God speaks, I will speak. But where God is silent... And you have to use wisdom and discretion and, with that. In a perfect world, that's how and it would be. And let each man be convinced in his own mind. Right. But there's so many times where, you know, so many people, this is where it gets really hard, specifically sure. with the LGBT conversation, is if you're trying to have these conversations and speak into someone's life, you're dealing with someone's personal identity, their entire existence is wrapped up in this. It looks judgmental and hateful and bigotry and the fact that, you know, and, and we've never said Jesus hate gays. Now, sadly, like certain churches like West, Westboro will. Sure. Um, but but we never will say that. And But when we come to certain people saying like, you know, this is what God says in his word, and I, I'm trying to come alongside and help you and disciple you, other people will look at it and be like, nah, I, I, I don't believe God says that. I believe God says this. Right. I think that's that's where the really hard part of Christianity and discipleship comes in. Right is if we want to glorify God, we do need to understand where his word stands and, and speaks where God speaks. But it's so hard with discipleship, specifically in these tough niche issues. Sure. Now, there's other ones where it's very easy to be black and white. Sure. Like the Bible, like, there's a reason why God says... Rape is bad. <laughs> right. And there's a reason why God says, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The hookup culture is not okay. Right. Like, it right. actually does a lot more damage. Sure. Than Pornography good. is not okay. Terrible. Right. But a lot of people say, oh, it's totally cool, especially if you introduce into marriage or this, that, and yeah. that. It's like, oh, hold up. What? It's mutually agreed upon, so no. it's all good. No, it's not. No. It's causing no. you both the lust now. <laughs> right. And it's creating fantasies that were never meant right. to be there. Exactly. But there's so many times where when we get into these hard not topic issues as Christians uh, where we believe, no, God is saying this. And someone says, no, nope, I don't believe that. I believe God says this, so leave me alone. That's where the real struggle comes. Yeah. That's that's where the real part comes. And that's where, like, right now denominations are splitting in half. Sure. Like United Methodist Church, sure. they split over the LGBTQ conversation. There's a new denomination forming right now. Well, shoot, even the SBC is splitting right now because of the whole— um um, what, women sex, pastors with saddleback? No, the sex, that one, the, the sex scandal stuff. That the if the the list of over seven hundred names, right. those churches because of different views on how to handle this, they're splitting right, and it's sad to see. So, what does true discipleship look like with that, and how do we hold people to the standard? I think the so, question that for the fact is it goes back to what we talked about with right. judging of you know looking in your own eye and going where have I fallen short with following after God, and if we truly are doing that. We should be doing that in community with one another. It shouldn't be I'm walking down the street 
and someone with blinds, my sign. and someone blindsides me or I blindside somebody else. You know, it's it's meant to be done in community. But I think the hard part comes with the American culture where not not culture, but the American political scene where everyone does have a voice. All of a sudden, everything becomes a political issue. Sure. And I think that's where it gets really hard as a Christian. So I think that uh, one, you know, as far as like even like the LGBTQ, you know, like you said, we don't we don't ever we'll never say that we don't love them or that no. Jesus doesn't love them. Right. But part of love and this happens in all facets of especially here in America, part of love is having the hard conversations. Well, right, same with our kids. Like, if I really love my kid, I'm not going to let them do whatever they want. Right, exactly. So those brothers that are saying, oh, it's okay, and we're just going to love the snot out of them, and it's like, well, no, you're actually enabling and you're hurting them, right? Mm -hmm. Because them and everybody else was born into sin, everyone. And and we've all identified as sinners to our sin before we were saved, Mm -hmm. right? That's why we have to find our, quote, unquote, new identity in Christ, right? Because we all identify as, I'm out for me. I'm this. I'm. I'm. My name's Chris, and I'm going to do what I want. Screw you. That's that's my identity, right? Of sin. Mm-hmm. LBGTQ. They just put a name to it, right? I'm gay. That's that's the name they put with the sin that they are are in, right? Um, and so we have to have those hard conversations, and it has to be done in love and gentleness. And when it's with a brother, right? We can't control the action or reaction mm-hmm. of another, but we can control our action and reaction of ourselves. So in the point where you're dealing with what you believe scripture is calling a sin, do it in gentleness and love and be open f- for the conversation. Mm-hmm. Now, if they reject it, take the rejection and let it go. You brought it up. You've done your job. No, let the Holy Spirit do his work. Let, if it's, if it's truly a sin, let the Holy Spirit convict him. And likewise, if a brother brings it to you, our first, my first response is always my pride wells up, and I'm like, "How dare you look at your sin, right?" <laughs> and it's always, and I, every Christian that I've ever seen pride in, it's the reaction and that I've yeah. had private. Yep. The re, the reaction is that we always use the Bible to bash, right? Take the plank out of your own eye before you take the speck out of mine. You throw scripture out like a weapon, like mm-hmm. a self defense. And I'm guilty of this. I'm I've done the same thing, right? Rather than just taking it and go, okay, you've brought this to my attention. Now, let's can we look at it? I want to know where you're coming from and I want to know if really, cause it's not a bad thing to have your theology challenged, right? Cause if you're strong in your theology and if it's true, your theology and your foundation isn't going to be shaken, mm-hmm. but if there's cracks in it, one, either it's going to crumble and you're going to change your mind or you're going to sure up your foundation. You're going to sure up them cracks. Cause you're going to start looking into it and studying. So we can't control the other people. I would say when you speak to people, speak to them in gentleness and love. And when people approach you, don't get prideful and be loving and ask for a conversation. I like it. I like it. I don't think we we, we need to talk <laughs> and open up more conversations because we've already crossed that, <laughs> sure. that hour mark. So should we so do some fun facts with Fuller and land this plane? Hey, I like how you called out the time. But, yeah, let's do it. Time for fun facts with Fuller. <laughs> I call it the time one time. You do it every single episode, Fuller. <laughs> He's like, it's my take, time. Take, it's my take time. out no, no, take out that own plank, bro. <laughs> Sorry, it was it. too easy. I love it. It was too easy. All right, my dude. To end this conversation, it was weird because we didn't really have. It was just it a took conversation. a little bit to get into it. it man. Well, once she defined it. And, we could and both, you were correct. Well, we could both get... No, it's not about being correct, but we could both get on the same page okay. at that point. Can we? Can I at least say this? Isn't that the way conversations are supposed to yes. go? If we got to... Maybe that was, but that's what this conversation was. We had to work to find the the common ground right. and then build off that common sure. ground. And right. it took some work. Heck yeah, yeah. It took, it us took like some work. At least 15 minutes into the conversation. Oh, so. at least. Well, dude, let's send these people on their merry way. What's the fun fact you got? The fun for us fact today? of the day is did you know Mercedes invented a car controlled by a joystick? Wait, like what? Yeah. The joystick <laughs> in the and ni- the 1966 Mercedes F200 showcase car controlled speed and direction, replacing both the steering wheel and the pedals. The car could also sense which side the driver was sitting on, so someone could control it from the passenger seat. What? I'm looking this up right now because I never it's, actually have heard of this it's, before. It's pretty cool, actually. Control it by... There it is. 1966, they had that technology. That that's, is that's so amazing. weird, though. Yeah. Now, my, my question is, is why didn't that take off? I have no idea, but can you imagine? Well, well we got te- this. This looks like a Tesla. This looks like a '60s <laughs> Tesla inside. Sure, but I, well, that I'm, is stinking cool. I'm wondering if maybe 
that's where some of the technology of today comes from with the, like the Teslas and stuff like the self-driving cars. It, it could, but I mean, I, I could see how it has less control over the actual mechanism. Cause if you're sure. just doing a joystick, well, there's a lot more computer to it. You have a transmitter just, and an emitter going. So it's probably going to have some lag time too. So you can't respond as quickly. It's probably why it really didn't take off safety. reasons. And if an arm gets poked or jerked or whatever, you're Ooh, going way yeah. out there. But anyway, anyway, that was a fun fact. Fun fact. I never, like, I've never even heard that one before. So the, well, that glad. is glory. I, yeah, that's cool. I'm glad I could bring Mercedes a new one. Was invented our Mercedes invented car controlled by a joystick in 1966 and now we have self-driving cars courtesy of Elon Musk thank you sir that's just wild but Twitter on Twitter (laughs) on well we love you guys we are so thankful that you joined us week in and week out on the podcast if you have not joined the Facebook community yet I would encourage you guys to head over there go to our Facebook page at Real Talk Christian Podcast and then find the groups and then you can be part of that group right there our group grows every every single day day and it's on it's wild we have great conversations in terms of just fun conversations sure we interact sometimes a little bit more inside that facebook group so if you want to be part of a community where we are trying to have fun together but also encourage each other in our faith that is the place to do it also go check us out on youtube if you haven't already go subscribe hit the little bell notification thank you you're welcome and, uh, yeah, you guys can watch us go crazy and spinning our wheels. Watch my mind. afro grow. Watch me pick my nose. Pick your, yeah, watch pick me your, adjust I love, my seat I love a thousand that, times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just calling so, it like it is, man. So uh, you can also find all the links to everything, including the show notes, on realtalkchristianpodcast.com or reach out to us at realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail.com or the phone number. 574-400-5352. Man, you're good. I love it. Well, hey, guys, we love you. Until next time. Take it easy.